What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video we are doing a oil cooler on my 6.0 power stroke. Many of you know this is a common failure point. We're going to talk about why that is later in the video. But for now, we're going to get started here shortly. But first, if you guys haven't, please hit that subscribe button. And also, if you enjoy this content, give this video a big thumbs up. Let's hear those comments down below, guys. How many oil coolers have you been through? Uh, Josh has his whole belief on rerouting the oil cooler. That's a whole nother issue. But anyway, we're going to get into getting to your oil cooler now here shortly. And uh, I'm not going to, this isn't going to be a step by step. There's those tutorial videos out there. Uh, this is going to be for, you can be a novice mechanic or backyard mechanic, whatever you want to call it, and successfully do this job. It's really not that hard. It's time consuming. If it is your first time doing it, I would set aside like a weekend start on a Friday night and uh, hopefully you finish Saturday and have Sunday to goof around with it. But it's really not that bad of a job. It's more just annoying. So, so the first things I'm going to do before I cut back is we're going to get this intake out of here. We're going to get that pipe off this little shroud here, which you just take a screwdriver down in here and start prying on these clips and pull up a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's not too bad. Uh, and we're going to get the alternator out a while too. And then I'm probably uh, pick up with you guys from there. You know, pretty simple to get these things out. You get this out, pull this belt off, uh, disconnect your batteries. I typically will at least pull this one completely out. Like I said, this job is not overly hard. It's a series of very small basic stuff uh, to get the whole job done. So we'll pick up with you guys on that and we'll go from there. Okay guys, so quick update here. Intake is obviously completely out. We got the wire lumen up top there uh, loose. We're gonna actually pull that out over where this degas bottle mounts uh, to give clearance in case I need to pull the turbo. I'm gonna try to avoid pulling it. I don't really feel like it right now. I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'm getting over a cold. So the least amount of work that I can do while doing this is kind of what I want to do. Oil is drained, coolant is drained. Uh, we did just pop the top of the coolant filter. Hot side intercooler pipe is off. Alternator's out. Both batteries are out. Uh, just to make sure nothing connects and messes anything up. We don't want any shorts happening. So what's next here is I loosened up just this top connection on my intercooler pipe. Many of you probably are realizing this is obviously not the factory intercooler pipe here. This is a no limit fab one. My hot side is from MBRP. I recommend both companies highly. They both make very nice stuff. So uh, those are my two recommendations if you're looking. Uh, one other thing, this hose here, this is actually my coolant filter, uh, pops up there. Uh, it's mildly helpful, maybe, I don't know. My oil, my oil cooler is clogged, so what's that really say? But anyway, that's enough of me complaining. Um, if you have a factory intake, I have an O-Dog ported intake here. If you have a factory intake, you'll have a hose coming off the manifold to this. Uh, just disconnect it, throw it wherever. Uh, you obviously you'll need it for reinstall. But that's really, I think that's about it. Uh, next steps here, we're gonna we're gonna get this off. And then we're gonna take these fittings off here. You'll need two wrenches, one to hold on to the onto the fitting that's on the in the housing and one to actually undo this. And after that, we'll come over here and we'll take the injector harness off. I don't know how well this is showing up here, but here's one of them. There's a little clip, you push it in, uh, and then you can pull up. You can take the clip straight out. Uh, be careful that you don't lose it. It's gonna be a pain in the butt to find. I'm sure they're cheap, but then you gotta wait for them. Uh, I prefer to just I prefer to just push them in and pull. A lot of times I will take pliers though to help push that little plastic pin in. Uh, if this doesn't make sense, when you guys get to it on your truck, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It's pretty self-explanatory. At that point, we'll take the oil filter and fuel filter housing off. It's four Torx bits around the base here. One, two, three, and four. Uh, and then after all of that's done, I will reconvene with you guys and we'll talk about what's next. Okay, making some more progress here. So uh, I hate these fuel filter housings. They irritate me. Uh, something fierce, it just frustrates me. Uh, Cause I never have luck taking them off easily. It should be simple and it never is for me, but whatever. So for you guys, just to let you know, um, 11 16ths for the smaller guys, 
on each of them. And for some reason, these bigger ones, maybe one of you guys out there under knows why, this, uh, the one on the housing is larger than the piece on here. For, the, for it is a 13th, 16th for this part. And this one I had to use an adjustable wrench, but uh, one issue when you have the O-Dog intake is that back one there gets caught on the sensor. So what you actually have to do is you have to unhook all the other fuel lines lift up the oil cooler housing, remove the sensor, put it back down, and then you can actually undo that one. It is a little frustrating because it seems dumb, but uh, that's what you have to do to get it. Uh, maybe on the later years, maybe that sensor's moved, you know, an inch away or a half inch away. Uh, it would really only need to be moved a quarter inch to completely clear it, but uh, part of doing some of this goofy stuff and having all these extras that is means you gotta kinda deal with stuff like this. So it is what it is, no big deal. We're gonna get this, uh, I'm unbolting the oil filter housing now. Okay guys, as you can see here, the intake manifold is out. We have it over here. I am moving super, super slow. I am uh, not feeling well and it's definitely catching up with me here. So, manifold's out. We now have access to this. Uh, there's one bolt that looks like it's gonna be tight between the turbo, but I think I can sneak it out and uh, That'll make me happy not having to pull my turbo, though we are going to wipe that off. It's a lot of dust on it, and you can't see how nice the powder coat looks. Again, from Turbo Time USA, huge shout out to those guys. Uh, tidbits on the O-Dog intake. It's a T30, is it? Hold on. T30, get a long shank, get it in a socket, uh, preferably one that won't, uh, that holds it in there and won't allow it to drop in uh, to the cylinders. Be very cautious if you don't have this connection. Um, you can drop this down into a cylinder. It's a pain in the butt to get out and hopefully uh, you do get it out. Otherwise you have a much bigger of a headache coming your way. Okay guys, so here's the oil cooler housing and you're gonna need two Torx bits. You're gonna need a, a T30 and a T45. There's larger ones and smaller ones. The smaller one, obviously the T30. One, two, Three, four, five. I count five smaller ones and five larger ones. So we're going to go. I have these all loosened up. I'm going to quick just take all these off. You guys will see me pull this apart bit by bit. All right. So start taking this stuff apart. Now there's two bolts here. I forgot to tell you guys, in here there's two 13 millimeter bolts. Am I holding the right? Nope, holding the wrong side. Uh, two 13 millimeter bolts, one here and one here. So take them out before you start hammering. Instructions do come with this, so if you forget any of this and don't feel like referencing this, when you get your oil cooler, there'll be instructions on how to do all this. It's, it's actually pretty nice, to be honest. There it is, not too bad. We are gonna clean this guy up uh, just because it is completely cruddy. Okay guys, so we have our parts here uh, all cleaned off or as clean as I'm going to actually get them. Obviously you can spend more time cleaning them. I don't feel like taking this whole assembly apart here. 
to clean this out, but it is something I'd like to do, but I am strapped for time, so just cleaned the outside as well as I could. I do pay, I always pay special attention to gasket mounting locations. Make sure to really clean them out, make sure everything's taken out of there. Um, that is just one thing I like to do. But one thing as you start taking this part, oil starts going everywhere, it creates a pretty big mess. So like I said, just take your time, clean it all back up, uh, make sure it's good there, and that's what we did. So this has all been, I cleaned this a while ago, maybe an hour or two, and uh, while I've been cleaning up in the engine bay a little bit and getting that ready for uh, this to go back in. So this is all dried, brake clean dries quick, So any, and I wiped this all down, so any residue is gone. So I'm gonna quick grab the oil cooler and I'm gonna literally, uh, I'm gonna show you guys on camera how we put this thing back together. Everybody asks what oil cooler to use. I only recommend OEM. That is the only company's oil cooler I put in my truck. I've had good luck with them. I'm not sure why I have rust in my cooling system right now. Uh, it kind of frustrates me, but I only recommend Ford OEM. It is a quality unit. Stay away from Dorman. Ignore everyone that says they put Dorman on with OEM gaskets. Buy a Ford OEM one. They're uh, roughly just under 400 bucks. I think you can pick them up for 372, something like that. Uh, my local Ford dealer actually is able, able to match Extreme Diesel's price. And the only thing is I had to pay taxes, but my local Ford dealer um, treats me pretty well, so whenever I can, I do my best to support them because they, uh, like I said, they've been fair to me. So uh, consider that, guys, as you're doing this stuff. Okay, so we have this here. So these are the O-rings you're looking for. They go on the inlet and outlet ports. And you'll notice there's two sizes, two larger, two smaller. Uh, the larger ones go on first on the bottom section, and then the smaller ones are on top. So let's get these all... So next you'll have these two relatively large but thinner um, thickness than these guys to do. You'll have two of them, they go on the inside of the oil cooler. And you'll have this one here. Now there's two very similar sized ones like this. The larger one is what's going to go in here. Again, oiling them up. So it should look like that. Uh, that guy, and those two. Now, for some of you, what that other O-ring's for, there's a bass, or bass, there's a brass, like, insert here. That O-ring goes there, if you guys have that. Next, we have this big, long guy here. This guy's always been a pain in the butt for me to install. I can't stand it, but um, obviously, this is very important. This prevents any oil leaks from here. So, okay, now this is ready to go here. So, from this point, you flip it over. This only goes on one way, so you can't mess it up. And <clears throat> start pressing down. takes a little bit of force, but it'll go. And then I always make sure to just give it a, a little extra. Now on the underside, we got two bolts there, 10 mils. Uh, I was gonna give it a little more, because the last thing you want is to have to mess with this after you uh, just put it all back together. So now we have that, so. Again here, got our two bolts down here, put these guys in. Okay, next we're gonna install the coolant reroute kit we have here. That's gonna sit right over that O-ring. So, take this job, 
flip it upside down here. And again, as we were cleaning this, we made sure all of our mounting surfaces and stuff were good to go. Okay guys, here we go. So we got a fair amount done here. The oil cooler's back in, the intake manifold's back in. I just need to tighten it up. Making some good headway. Really, uh, once, the, once the intake's tightened back up, there isn't much left to do. It's pretty easy stuff at that point. Uh, it'll probably take me more time to prime the fuel system and oil. High pressure oil system's a big one, guys, to uh, get ready. It definitely takes a lot, or it takes some time. We are gonna fill, I always fill up through the oil filter housing. It is slower, it takes longer, but um, it does seem to start up faster. It kind of like almost pre-primes the high pressure oil system. So something to consider as you guys are coming across this. Um, one thing, if you have a exhaust, a uh, four inch exhaust, I know I'm pointing back here, you can't even see it. Anyway, it can get in the way a little bit with this O-Dog intake. And as I recall, it wasn't overly fun with the uh, stock intake either, but uh, what I did is I just jacked up from underneath the truck to push up on the exhaust so it's out of the way. If you have somebody with you, they can just go under there and push it up for you, but I'm, uh, I'm rolling solo today, so I don't have anyone with me to do that, but uh, it's coming together, guys. Okay, guys, so pretty much coming together here. We're towards the end of this project. Uh, Thickums back in, bolted down. Always double check all of your injector plugs, especially this guy under the under the alternator. Uh, you're going to be irritated with yourself. You got to pull that to get to that guy. But check them. Check to make sure everything's hooked up to the Thickum. Double check your sensors on the oil cooler, uh, your VGT. Though that's pretty easy to get to even after install. Uh, most of this is pretty much done here, guys. We have batteries, intake or um, intercooler pipes, and intake and and uh, start filling her up with oil. So next on the list here, we're gonna get this uh, degas bottle back up, uh, both intercooler pipes on intake, and then we're pretty much in the home stretch then. I'm gonna actually go underneath now, put the oil uh, drain bolt back in, start filling it back up with oil. Uh, again, I fill through your oil filter housing you don't have to, you can fill your regular way, but it does help to prime the high pressure oil system a little bit. So something to consider. Um, goofy thing I typically do, I always forget to put this wire lumen back under the degas bottle. So be cautious of that. Uh, hopefully my mistake helps you guys a little bit. But yeah, so like I said, home stretch guys. Um, another couple small things, there's a bolt here for your fuel rail. Um, or fuel line that bolts to your manifold and two bolts for the fan shroud here. I got to do yet. All right, guys, so truck's back together. Everything is hooked up. Uh, we're good to go. Coolant system is just filled with water right now. We are going to drain that out. We're going to do a few distilled flushes and then we're going to fill up with uh, Cat ELC. That's what I've been running. Been happy with it so far. And uh, I don't think you can blame my oil cooler clogging on Cat coolant, but I'm sure somebody out there will say something. That being said, before I get asked, I think Ford Gold coolant is fine. However, I recommend very frequent interval changes like 30,000 miles, um, even yearly, depending on how much you drive. But it does work well. I've had good luck with it other than when I failed to do maintenance on it. So that is my belief on that. Take it for what it's worth, but tons of people run it just fine. Again, it's, uh, it is a little more maintenance heavy, but if you don't mind, and it's not stupid expensive guys. I mean, you're talking once a year, drain it, um, maybe do one uh, distilled water flush and drain it again. It's really not that hateful, so it's up to you guys, whatever. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna set the camera down. We're gonna go do the first start on the truck.
Okay guys, so we came outside because it's a little noisy in there, but uh, quick start up, that was the first one. Uh, it's not like I did the, tried this a few times first. That was my first startup. And that's why you fill through the oil filter housing. It primes the high pressure oil system. It'll fire right up for you, no problem. So uh, check for any leaks, everything looks good. We're gonna let it run for a little bit and uh, check it again, then take it for a drive. But I'd recommend letting it run for at least five minutes um, just to clear out the system, clear all the junk out. And uh, after five minutes, I'll check it again. Everything's good, we'll pull it out, take it for a test spin, guys. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, guys, so the project is done. The truck's all put back together other than needing to wipe off, wipe off some dirt and grime on the truck. Uh, everything's done, project went well. Uh, like I said, not feeling 100%, so that added a, a new, a little extra difficulty to it. I was really running slow, especially Saturday. Sunday, I was feeling much better. Wrap the project up. Deltas are excellent uh, within like four degrees right now. I do expect that to raise a little bit because typically they always do after a fresh oil cooler. You don't stay that low for long. Plus, there's obviously probably still some junk in there, but at least we're good. We have a big towing trip coming up. Going to be towing the camper soon. Hope this video helped some of you guys out. For those of you looking to do an oil cooler project, I tried to point out some differences from more of a factory setup to what I have going on, but this is the general idea that you'll have to deal with when doing it. There's a few extra steps in there if you have a different, set, if you have a more traditional setup than everything I have going on. But this should hopefully lay the foundation for some of you guys that are looking to tackle this project on your own for the first time. And really the only differences from my setup to a stock setup would be the coolant reroute you don't have to deal with. That's much easier. There's just a hose there. You literally turn it and it pushes straight back. That's how it locks in place is it just turns. It commonly leaks. You guys have probably already seen it. And uh, the EGR cooler, if you have that in there still, uh, th that's really it that I can think of off the top of my head. Pretty much everything else is close enough to factory that it's not gonna be a big deal to deal with. So anyway, guys, if this video helped you out, please give it a big thumbs up, drop those comments down below, and I'll see you guys in the next upload.